Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Brain Shanae and today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up and I know it has been a while um, since I've you seen a video from me. Um, it's been a hectic long like weeks as far as work goes but anyway so if you want to know more about my wrap up of August please stay tuned. <laughs> Every single day I'm gonna make something great That's my way Every single day I'm gonna make And we're back so long time no see I do apologize it has been a while but I'm getting back in the groove of reading um, especially a few pages each day that way my schedule doesn't get too hectic and then I end up pretty much being um, held up and being delayed as far as my reading goes um so first off the first book that i read in august i only and by the way i only read two books in august i tried at least to read two books a month um due to my hectic schedule so that's the most i could do a month for now um but the first book that i read is uh the chilling adventures of sabrina the sea uh, the season of the witch by sarah reese brennan um i wanted to read this book because of course it's getting closer into that time of year where it's getting uh, cold and Halloween is coming. Um, but also I wanted to read this book because I loved the Netflix series of Sabrina. And so this was really revving me up to wanting to read it. It is the, inspired by the Netflix original series and it is the prequel novel of this series. And it was amazing. But if you haven't, um, did not see my TBR for August, let me tell you what this is about. So it's the summer before her 16th birthday and Sabrina Spellman knows her world is about to change. She's always studied magic and spells with her aunts, Hilda and Zelda, but she's also lived a normal, normal mortal life attending Baxter High, hanging out with her friends Susie and Roz and going to the movie with her boyfriend Harvey Kinkle. Now time is running out on her everyday normal world and leaving behind Roz and Susie and Harvey is a lot harder than she thought it would be, especially because Sabrina isn't sure how Harvey feels about her. Her cousin Ambrose suggests performing a spell to discover Harvey's true feelings, but when a mysterious wood spirit interferes, the spell backfires in a big way. Sabrina has always been attracted to the, to the power of being a witch, but now she can't help wondering if that power is leading her down the wrong path. Will she choose to forsake the path of light and follow the path of night? And so with this, it sort of breaks down more. Um, yes, it does reflect the Netflix series, but it even breaks down more of of Sabrina herself and her feelings for Harvey. And it seemed like her obsession of Harvey, of harving, Harvey, Harvey, um, like uh, showing how much he how much he li like likes her, his feeling towards her, because she gets him keep confused and doesn't know. And you know how boys or men do; they try they conceal their their real feelings and they don't and they don't show it. So you, it's like a guessing game over and over and over again. And so Sabrina had this spell with Ambrose, and so with that it backfires, and she, she and she soon realizes out of all the spells that she had conjured on Harvey, he still had feelings for her, and he had expressed them in so many ways. She was hidden um, by how she felt and she just realized how he was expressing his real feelings but she just didn't realize it because she was consumed into her and what she wanted from Harvey. But with this I gave this um, at least a five out of five stars because this was a very good read. It breaks down not just Sabrina's life but it also breaks down Ambrose's life even more about why he has been imprisoned in the house. It also brings up, up the life of Zelda and Helda and all the information um, and deeper into Greendale. So I really enjoyed this book. Like I said, I gave this a five out of five stars because this really is an awesome book to read, especially if you love the Netflix series, <laughs> Sabrina. I love Sabrina, but I, like uh, fr from this book, but I, was, I really was disappointed because, but, but then again, it shows the true self of Sabrina because yeah, she is a witch, but she's also mortal. She has that ability of making mistakes. As hu human beings, we all have the ability of making bad decisions and mistakes and we have to learn from them. And so from her, after the spell and everything, she did learn from them, but it was a short, it was after a long time of messing things up and having consequences to her um, pretty much to her actions where she realized that she doesn't know if she could be uh, be amongst with her mortal friends and so with this it definitely gives you a more perspective of Sabrina as far as her because in the in the Netflix series alone it shows her as a perfect human being a perfect witch as well but in this one in this book it shows her her flaws and how she is not perfect and we get a better breakdown of her realizing that she has flaws that she has to fix and if she doesn't want to fix them what is she going to do is she going to live in the light with her mortal friends or is she going to live in the night with her witch friends and people in the academy 
in the academy who are nothing but witches and warlocks so she has to make that decision and so in the netflix series on netflix you will see the her decision and what decision she has made but i definitely would recommend this book and if you haven't seen sabrina i would definitely check it out because it is amazing it is addicting I literally binge watched the first and second season and I cannot wait to watch the third but I definitely would keep an eye out for the third season I don't know when that comes out I think it comes out maybe next year in January February but yeah but this was a great read and once again I gave this a five out of five stars so Sabrina y'all but I just love this book but anyway the second book that I read in August um in my TBR there was it was um the second book of Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. So besides that, I switched up and got this because I recently had got this arc from uh, from Penguin Teen, and this book comes out in September. Um, I believe early September, um, because this is a republication. So this book comes out in September the 17th and it's a republication of this book. And I really love this book. I loved everything about it. It was amazing. It was breathtaking. I love it so much. And so the book that I read, the second book was Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. This is an advanced reader's copy that I received from Penguin Teen. And I just love this book so, so much. It 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 brought a lot of light to that. But anyway, so I gave this a five out of five stars because I love this. This is real stuff that I really loved. The only thing that I didn't like was that it says that the age group is 14 up, grades 9 through 9 and up. But technically, I think this is more for like maybe for college, maybe teens a little bit older because it does have some instances about weed and a whole bunch of other things that I'm sure teachers probably won't agree with in this book. But other than that, I love this read and I loved everything about the main character, Juliet, who she breaks out saying that she is um she's you know she's a lesbian um but there's a lot of people that didn't approve of it which is her mother her loving mother that she really wanted her approval from um but anyway it starts out with her in college and she loves everything about feminism and everything like that so she reads a book called raging flower by harlow prisbane and she wrote a letter to her and so as you know it after that letter she became an intern with ed harlow for the for Harlow Prisbane in Oregon when or Portland Oregon and so with that she travels there um, and she noticed that in Portland Portland it's very different than the Bronx where she is where Julia is from and everything like that and with Harlow she breaks about her spirituality her sexuality her feminism and what have you but the thing is about is is that we is that Harlow is white and Juliet is Latina and so with that, it comes a lot of contradictions with Harlow because she's experienced, she wants to know more about feminism, how women need, women need to stick together. But then she soon, she offends Juliet by saying that, yes, I brought this person out of the hood um, and take care of her. And she's been part of my intern, da, 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 da. But then you realize that that was, sort of, that was racist on what, how she said that in her um, reading, which she had a reading done in a bookshop, Powell's bookshop in Portland. And so she was very offended and she really, really, admired Harlow but then she realized that Harlow isn't perfect and in that moment of her when she was trying to find her, her sexuality and everything she thought that she would find herself through Harlow but that was never the case. Juliet had to go through many things with Harlow. She had to speak to her family and um, experience other social uh, communities as well as far as the LGBTQ um, community and she experienced so much but then after all that she experienced her she was able to find herself out of all that out of all the disappointments of her one of her favorite authors of Harlow Brisbane she found her sexuality she did not quite know who she was yet but she was willing to figure it out and and pretty much pretty much speak for herself and speak up to her her experiences her situations and she just got a uh, was broke had her girlfriend had broken up with her for another girl and she was also sad but then she also was having a relationship with another girl named Kira who she really loved they didn't have a they didn't put a name on it they just they loved each other they didn't think of themselves as a girlfriend or whatever what have you they just didn't have it as any type of status for themselves which was uh, which Julia actually enjoyed didn't mind them not having a status after going through a, a terrible breakup um, with her her significant other who also was interning in Washington DC but anywho this book was breathtaking I love this so much I uh, loved everything about Juliet because even though it's about exploring your sexuality and feminism in life in general you have to find yourself you have to know like life is nothing but finding yourself like going to school you wanted to find out what 
what you want to do in life and with that and with life you have to explore you have to take risks you have to be willing to do things out of the box in order to pretty much know what you want to do and with Juliet she still was trying to figure herself out at the very end but she felt very confident and like in the last part of the book I'll just read this to you because it was very inspiring and I just loved it but she said she wrote um she wrote a note to herself and it says dear Juliet repeat after me you are a bruja you are a warrior you are a feminist you are a beautiful brown babe surround yourself with other beautiful brown and black and indigenous and marina and chicana native indian mixed race asian gringa bariqua babes let them uplift you rage against the motherfucking machine question everything anyone ever says to you or forces down your throat or makes you write a hundred times on the blackboard Question every man that opens his mouth and spews out a law over your body and spirit. Question every single thing until you find the answer in a daydream. Don't question yourself unless you hurt someone else. When you hurt someone else, sit down and think and think and think and then make it right. Apologize when you fuck up. Live forever. Consult the ancestors while counting stars in the galaxy. Hold wisdom under your tongue until it absorbs into the bloodstream. Do not be afraid. Do not doubt yourself. Do not hide. Be proud of your inhaler, your cane, your back brace, your acne. Be proud of the things that the world uses to make you feel different. Love your fat, fucking glorious body. Love your breasts, hips, and wide ass if you have them. And if you don't, love the body you do have or the one you create for yourself. Love the fact that you have ingrown hairs on the back of your thighs and your grandma's mustache on your lips. Read all the books that make you whole. Read all the books that pull you out of the present and into the future. Read all the books about women who get tattoos and break hearts and rob banks and start heavy metal bands. Read every single one of them. Kiss everyone. Ask first. Always ask first and then kiss the way stars burn in the sky. Trust your lungs. Trust the universe. Trust your damn self. Love hard, deep without restraint or doubt. Love everything that brushes past your skin and lives inside your soul. Love yourself. In La Virgin's name and in the name of Selena Adiosa. Adiosa. So even with that note alone that Julia had written to herself, it's inspiring. It makes you realize that, yes, I am thick, I have thighs, but I love myself. And that's all, and that's also about life, loving yourself. Even if you create a new stuff, new stuff, like even if you get plastic surgery or whatever, you still have to love yourself at the end of the day, you know, regardless of what people think of you. And I think that's what people forget about themselves. And I, this is also a book that I would recommend people to read because it just gives you an uplifting of yourself, of realizing that you are good for who you are. You don't have to change for anybody. Love yourself. Lo love who you are. Keep pushing. Keep striving to reach your goals of whatever goal that you do have. But anyway, this book was amazing. If I had to give it more than five stars out of the five, I'll give it a thousand or ten thousand, whatever. Billions. This, this book is amazing. I love it. I really recommend people of getting it. Like I said, this is a uh, republication, which it comes out sep September the 17th of this year. I know some people already have this book um, previously before, but this is, a, like I said, a republication. I would definitely check this book out. This is amazing. I loved it so much. I would, re I would definitely, this will be another reread for me because I really love this book so, so much. But anyways, this is another great book that I really recommend that does come out in September. Um, but Juliet Takes a Breath is definitely a five out of five stars, which it can inspire anyone, regardless of your race, your sexuality, whoever you may be. This is a book for everyone, not just a specific book, uh, group of people. Um, but anyways, this is the other book that I read in August. So I read Sabrina, um, The Season of the Witch, which was an awesome book. And then I read Julia Takes a Breath. Both of, the, both of these books are five out of five stars. I really recommend these books and they are amazing. So I definitely would check these out. Uh, like this is already out, but once this comes out, I definitely recommend you reading this because this is inspiring. It's amazing. It's, it's obviously an amazing, breathtaking book. So definitely check out for this when it comes out. But anyway, that is it, you guys. That is my wrap up for August. Um, if you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But thank you so much for watching, guys, and for my new viewers. And if you have anything or concerns about this book or if you have something deep that you want to discuss, just leave, the, leave it in the description below and we can have a whole conversation. But thank you so much for watching, you guys. See ya!